Welcome back everybody. Thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I will go over my opinion on these two fabulous speakers. Focal Maestro Evo and Magical S7. What do I think about each speaker? Well, stay tuned and find out. Okay guys, you have heard the pros of the Focal Maestro Evo and the Magical S7. But I know you guys are probably asking yourselves, Jay, what's not so good about them? Tell us. Well, I am definitely going to tell you because as you know, that's what my channel is about, telling it like it is. So let's get started with the cons of the Focal Maestro. Again, disclaimer, this is my opinion. This is what my findings are. You may have different findings in your room or your particular system. So I'm only talking about the cons that I found about the speakers given my room and my electronics. Let's get started with the Maestro. First con, as good as the spikes are and as good as they sound, you need to buy the ISO acoustic footers for this speaker. I am personally using them. I can tell you that if you do not put ISO acoustics on this speaker, it'll sound good, but you have no idea how good it can really be, how good it can really get. So that is an additional cost to the purchase value of this speaker. You need to get footers for the speaker or else I find the speaker less coherent and not disappearing as much as it does when it's placed on ISO acoustic footers. So if you have a Focal Maestro, please do yourself a favor, buy ISO acoustic footers for it. Or if you have a Focal, period, if you have any Focal speaker, please get yourself some ISO acoustic footers. It may, they make a ton of difference. Another con of the Maestro Evo, and I do not know if this is a con but it's something that I actually struggle with. And that is the fact that because it is a down firing port, I need to find the proper placement to get the full impact of the speaker. So I spent a tremendous amount of time moving the speaker forward, backward, and trying to figure out where is the perfect balance occurring? Where am I getting a, an even presentation where the bass doesn't overpower the highs or the mids and where it, the speaker is not so pushed up against the wall that the sound stage collapses. It is not necessarily an easy speaker to place. I will say this to you. But if you work very hard at it, I think you can get great results with the speaker. Another con that I found with the Maestro Evo is the fact that I feel this, this speaker really shines when you use two amplifiers per speaker or two separate channels per speaker or you buy amp the speaker, however you want to say it. This speaker completely wakes up. It is more expensive to get the speaker to sing correctly. Now you may need two channels per speaker to buy amp it, or you might need two power amplifiers, a total of four power amplifiers if you have monos. So please keep that in mind. The Maestro, in my opinion, sings really well with just one channel connected to it. But if you're able to buy amp it, it goes to a whole new level. And that adds more cost to the ownership of this speaker because now you have to have more money in it, more into electronics to get it to elevate itself even further. Another con with this speaker, and I call it a con because I'm having a difficult time articulating my challenges with this speaker. That would be, in my opinion, you cannot use silver cables. You cannot use any sort of silver cable with this speaker because it gets bright. I do not believe in silver cables, period, with any beryllium tweeter. That's my opinion. I just don't like silver cables for beryllium tweeter. I think beryllium tweeters in general are, are better with copper cables. Okay, so if you're buying this speaker and you have silver cables like wire world cables, it might not work for you guys. It might be a little too much. That tweeter right there might begin to really, really sing 
more than what you can handle and it might lead to a short listening session. So something to contemplate, if you have silver cables and you're looking into a Focal Maestro, you might need new cables in general. You might need to get away from silver and begin to invest in copper cables. And then the final con of this speaker, and this is a con that I probably shouldn't mention, probably should not mention, but I'm going to anyway. If you have a room that is quite wide, okay, and the speakers need to be spread apart too much, because let's say you have a big screen or you have a lot of furniture in between um, and the speakers just need to be really, really far apart from each other, be careful with that. Okay, I discovered the hard way. When these speakers are spread apart too much, the cohesiveness of the mid-range, the vocals begin to dismantle, begin to just do this, unlock. And then you begin to hear two separate speakers. So I do not believe that the maestro has the ability to be, let's say, 15 feet apart from each other. I think that's too much for the speaker. I don't think the speaker should be spread apart more than... 12 feet, I would say. I think after that, you begin to lose what's happening between the speaker. I actually did this exercise behind closed doors many times. The speakers like to be relatively close, about 10, 12 feet max apart from each other. 15, I just feel like the magic between the speaker begins to get diminished. And you wouldn't know this unless you go and try what I'm trying to tell you. Okay? So, Keep that in mind, be careful. If you're looking for a speaker that needs to have cohesiveness, where the vocals are locked in the middle and they need to be very far apart from each other, I just don't think the Maestro is the right model. I think it might be the Stella perhaps, but I think the Maestro is a phenomenal speaker either way. And now we get to the Magical S7 and its cons. Well, I have said it before, there is no perfect product out there. Every product has pros and cons. What those cons are, I think it's subjective. So, what are the cons of the Magical S7? Number one, it needs power. More power, in my opinion, than this speaker needs. The Magical S7 is very power hungry. You need a ton of power to control those woofers. I'm telling you, if you're out there and you're owning a magical speaker and you're struggling with bass, I would look into two things. One, your room. You may have a room that's too big for that speaker. Two, power is not enough, insufficient to wake up that speaker, that seal design, and get those woofers moving. Remember, seal, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, seal cabinets need a ton of power. I have tested this theory. I am exhausted of doing it. The Boulder 3060 told me that is indeed the case. This is why I've said that some of the best bass I've had is from that speaker, but it took power, a lot of power. So struggles with the bass and you have a magical speaker, look into your amplification, consider buying a more powerful amplifier, or you simply have a room that is too big for the speaker that you chose. Another con of the Magical S7, and that is the fact that I feel to create a massive soundstage with this speaker, they got to be really spread apart, really far apart. If you have a space that is relatively narrow and the speakers need to be within 8 to 11 feet apart, 8 to 10 feet apart, I just don't feel the S7 is the speaker for you. I have tried placing the speakers in the same spot as where my Focals were, and I've noticed that the speakers did not like the space between them. If you're asking me what happened, simply the soundstage wasn't there. I wasn't getting, I was not getting the huge, enormous presentation that the Focal was giving me in the same position. So what I had to do is get creative, and I began to research online, I began to look at some pictures, even from the Magical Factory when they had the S7s in their showroom, um, in their room, I noticed that they were very far apart and very aggressively towed in, almost directly at the listener 
but I spoke to a lone wolf and he agreed that the best practice is to make sure that the speakers join behind your head about two feet behind your head. So that's what I've been doing. I've had exceptional results, but again, they need space between them. Remember that if you're considering a magical S7 and you need a big presentation, they got to be really far apart from each other, which is very surprising because the cohesiveness of the speaker does not unlock when they're very far apart from each other. Everything remains in the middle. I do not know how Magical does it, but it is exceptional to see that you can put the speaker so far apart and yet the magic between the speaker does not disassemble. So pretty interesting. Another con of the speaker. When I first got the Magical S7 in here, I love the bass, but I had mixed opinions about the rest of the presentation. It didn't make me feel like what I was hearing was real enough, but I had it on casters. As soon as I put that speaker under the amp pods, everything just went out the window. Everything that I didn't like about the speaker fixed itself. So the con here is you need to seriously consider the amp pods for the Magical S7. I feel that when you use anything else, you're kind of using the rough draft of the speaker. Does that make sense? You're not really hearing 100% what Alon Wolf was trying to do with the speaker. The level of transparency, the effortlessness of the speaker is enhanced when you use these M pods. I did not like it with the spikes. So if you are considering an S7, highly urge you to buy the M pods. I know it's $9,000 more, but if you're playing at this level, you probably have $9,000 in your pocket to spend. Another con of the Magical S7, it's gonna tell it like it is. It's gonna be ruthless with you. It's not coming into your room to make friends with you. I have been vocal about this with regards to Magical. I would say the M6s may probably get a pass on this, but the S series, or probably even the Q series, which I haven't owned, but I'm assuming they are the same, they are very honest speakers. They are, it's like a white piece of paper. Whatever you're writing on it, it's gonna show it to you. Okay, so, so it is very important that your level of electronics is really high up there. Extremely, extremely high up there. You can't deny the fact that when you have a transducer like this, when you have something of this caliber, it will just call you out on all your cheapness. Everything you're not doing, this thing is gonna call you out on it. I know right now Magical owners, new Magical owners, that's shifted out of a Focal and moved into a Magical or shifted out of a Rockport and now they're into a Magical that are struggling. They're telling me there is a lot of bite, there is a lot of brightness, a lot of this, a lot of that. And what I said to them was, all it's doing, all that speaker's doing is telling it like it is. It's telling you you got cheap Amazon power cords. It's telling you you do not have the right electronics. It's telling you you have shortcuts throughout your system. If you hate it, then hate yourself first because you created that environment. The speaker is coming in to just be raw, honest, and open with you. And you have to keep in mind that many of us are always trying to bypass things that we should never bypass. We're always trying to figure out, for instance, we know we do not need a preamplifier, so I should put that money in the bank. I should use a DAC instead because the DAC can work as a preamplifier. That's a shortcut that a lot of people always think about and have done. And I think this speaker is gonna let you know if that DAC is up to par to really get those woofers moving and under control. It'll let you know if that DAC you're using should be the best component suited for the job. Another con of the Magical S7 is power. Is your electrical, your electrical system needs to be very, very top notch. If your electrical system is terrible, if you're using stock power cords too much in the system, the tweeter on that speaker will begin to tell you, your power is no good, your cables are no good, 
that speaker is going to talk to you. And I have demonstrated this and I have evaluated this particular problem. Anytime I have fixed my power, and, and by the way, I haven't talked about my future power conditioner that I will be representing, but that power conditioner has been a life savior with the Magical S7. It has completely made the Magical S7 sound like I never thought a Magical speaker could sound. And it goes back to what I just said, power. You have to make sure your electrical is up to snuff. You have to make sure your ducts are in a row. There is no time, that speaker has no time for any shortcuts, for any cheap outlets with garbage, cable in the wall. Your system, your electrical needs to be on point. But when it's on point, oh boy, that speaker will let you know right away. It was money well spent. Well, guys, now it is time for me to tell you all who should buy a Focal Maestro and who should buy a Magical S7. And I'm going to make this real quick. If you are looking for a speaker that needs quality electronics, of course, that needs you to be serious about the hobby, but that is going to still reward you and tries to come into the room and play nice as best as possible, I think this is your best friend right here. This speaker right here is your best friend when it comes to that. I find the speaker naturally musical. Um, but I can say that if you do not what you're doing, it can get out of hand. The speaker can get loose bass if you're using the wrong amplification. It might get bright if you're using the wrong cables. But I think overall, the speaker loves to be, loves to be your friend. It loves to play ball with you. If you are a person that just simply doesn't want to rework their system, although I have been very vocal about this, you have to be willing to understand, you have to understand that when you change something in the system, especially a speaker, you will have to make other changes. There's no ifs and buts about it. The only way in which that might be an exception, the only time in which that might be an exception is if you're just moving up the ladder within the same manufacturer, okay? But I also feel that the Maestro here has the ability to play nice with just about every type of music that you play, 80s, 90s, 2000. Um, however, it's still going to tell you the truth, but I feel like, for instance, let's say you play a recording that is considered uh, 7 on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the best recording you can possibly have, you can possibly listen to. You play a recording that's a 7 to this speaker and it will try hard to land at an 8, make it an 8, 8.5, okay? So it's quote-unquote compensating, not really what I'm trying to say, but you get what I'm saying. It's trying to help you and play nice with recordings that are not necessarily great recordings. It has absolutely no problem and it's quite comfortable actually playing recordings that are not the best recordings out there. It's a lot more friendly, if that makes sense. So for me, if you're a person that does not want to know the current state of your system to a certain extent, I think you are better suited for the Focal Maestro Evil. Moving on to this boy. Okay. Let me tell you about the S7. The S7, to me, is the most honest speaker, as I said earlier. It is not going to come in and facilitate anything for you. It is not going to come in and help you. No, no, you have to help it. There's a difference. This one will help you. Will help you in terms of not punishing you as much for not having the greatest and the best of everything. Okay, it's not going to quite punish you. This one 
It's just going to let it rip. This one will tell you what you've got. This one will be the truth. And if you hate that type of approach, you are probably not going to like the Magic OS 7. To me, the Magic OS 7 is for that individual that just wants the purest, most honest, the realism of a presentation. If you play a recording on the Magic OS 7 that is a 10, it'll land at a 10, no problem. If it's a 7, it'll land at a 7. If it's a 3, it'll land at a 3. With this one, if you play a recording that is an 8, 8.5, it will try and struggle very hard to get it to a nine, nine and a half. It'll make it better, but I don't think you guys understand what a 10 is considered unless you have both speakers next to each other. This one will let you know exactly that that recording is a 10. This one will still sound good, but you'll notice that this one will elevate itself when you play material of that level. Does that make sense? So, although it's very hard, to know that, unless you have both speakers in the room, that is a fact. I've done it here. I know exactly what I'm telling you. So the honesty and the realism and the truthfulness of the Magic OS 7 is something that I personally appreciate. But I'll tell you, once again, but I'll be honest, once again, you got to have, you can't show up like this with the Magic OS 7. You can't. This with Magical, with the Magic OS 7, you might as well keep your money in the bank. You got to be willing to do what it takes to elevate the speaker. And if you do not have the time, the patience, if you are an impatient individual, if you go if you get frustr if you get frustrated easily and you don't have a dealer that supports you, you are not going to be vibing. You are not going to be getting along with the magical S7. Okay? Now the M series is a little easier to play with. I think it's a lot more polite. It's very beautiful sounding. Um, the S series and the Q series, in my opinion, although again, I have not owned the Q series, I believe the Q series is probably this close to the same as the S in terms of the honesty or the, uh, the honesty and the truthfulness of the presentation. Who should buy the S7? I simply feel it should be that person that doesn't want to be lied to. Give it to me. Give it to me the way it is. Put it on the plate. If it's not well done, I want to see blood on the steak, pouring out of the steak. I want to smell it. I want to know that somebody did a bad job in the kitchen. The Magic OS 7 is that speaker for you. And it really has to do with the type of person and audiophile that you are. But both are phenomenal speakers. In closing, both speakers absolutely have blown me away. I could live easily with either speaker. Easily. I would not hesitate in buying them again if the opportunity comes around. I'm not saying that they're leaving tomorrow, but I'm just telling you that it is, they are both special speakers. Do not feel afraid by any means of buying either speakers. I just want you guys to understand the challenges that you will face with both, the pros and the cons. And let me tell you, I thought long and hard to come up with the cons on both speakers because it is not really easy to think about what to tell you all that the speakers didn't do so well or where they're lacking, if there's any lacking areas. I personally don't think so. I think they're both awesome. I think the pros of bo on both speakers justify and completely offset any minor uh, deficiencies that it may have. So if you have the budget to buy either speaker, you have my 100% approval. I am approving it right now you can be extremely, you could be very sure that if you follow my guidelines and everything I just said on this video, you are set up for success. Well, guys, that sums it up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I have worked extremely hard trying to articulate everything about these two speakers that I can possibly think of. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button support me you know that it means a lot to me when you guys are behind me i keep bringing madness like this and there's more to come oh boy you know there's always more to come thank you for your time continue to subscribe until the next one peace